Now, the trouble with hashtags is they elide the spaces. We don't, we don't uh, include spaces in hashtags. So Susan Album Party can also look like Sue's Anal Bum Party. Hi, my name's Dennis Duncan. I'm a lecturer in English Literature at University College London, and I'm the author of a book called Index, A History of the... And I'm here today at Penguin to talk about book indexes and why they are more interesting than you might think. Every time you look something up on the internet, every time you use a search engine, um, what that search engine is doing um, is actually looking up your search terms in its index. Google calls its process, its process for its, its search engine, crawling and indexing. Crawling means the, uh, the, the, the web spiders go and visit every single uh, web page on the internet. And then they put the results, the words that they find on those pages, into vast alphabetical tables. And all of this work is done beforehand. So when you come along with your search terms, what you're doing is looking up those terms in the index. So when you search for something on the internet, um, you're using a process that actually was discovered, invented, I should say, um, about 800 years ago, uh, round about uh, the year 1230. And when it was invented, it was invented um, twice. It gets invented in Paris and it gets invented in Oxford, and they're two subtly different versions of the same thing. The index as it was invented in Paris is the word-for-word -word index, what we call the concordance, which is where you take a text, break it down into its individual words, and then you put them in alphabetical order. And anyone who's looking for such and such a word, you just look it up in the table. This is kind of the way that a search engine works, or kind of the way if you're uh, jumping through a document using control F, you're using that type of concordance search. The other type of index, which was invented by a man called Robert Grosstess in Oxford, round about 1230, is a kind of reader oriented index, what we call the subject index. And this is where somebody notes an idea in a text and says, OK, the, the idea of the Trinity, that occurs here. Make a note of where that is. And the themes or topics or ideas or subjects of, of a text, their positions are noted. So instead of being a word for word index, it's a more kind of conceptual index. This is the kind of thing we're used to at the back of books, which is subject indexes rather than word for word indexes. The funny thing is they both get invented round about the same time and when we move to the digital era we're really in a kind of concordance in, uh, era, uh, the era of looking up things word for word. But as AI searching becomes more sophisticated um, it's better at matching concepts even if we don't use the same words for it. One of the things that I discovered is, is that actually indexes seem such a kind of innocuous or even a kind of sensible uh, quiet device at the back of a book, um, but their history is quite a, a kind of gnarly one, full of heretics and disgraced politicians. Um, so I'll give you an example. In the 1540s, in the reign of Henry VIII, um, religious strife, as we know, uh, is a kind of theme of the time. Um, there was a chorister in Windsor called John Marbeck, who suddenly found that his house was raided by the religious authorities and he was arrested. Um, what they discovered in his house was that he had been preparing an index to the English Bible. Now, the English Bible had been uh, legal in this country for less than a decade. We know that uh, Tyndall had been persecuted for translating the Bible. Now, Marbeck um, had been preparing an index to the Bible, and the, the authorities were very suspicious about this, thinking that there must be some editorialising, some work going on here. What are the terms that this... Um, a heretic is choosing for his index. And Marbeck said it's not uh, a subject index, it's a concordance to the Bible. And as he explained this, they set him a test. And they said, well, if it's a concordance, you don't speak Latin, how are you using a Latin Bible to produce a concordance of the English Bible? And he said, well, it's quite easy. I know enough Latin to take a Latin concordance and navigate my uh, way to the right place. And then I look that up in an English Bible and I just put that term. But there's no thought going into it, said Marbeck. There's no editorialising on my part. This is a word-for-word -word index. This is important because um, Marbeck was about to go to the stake Marbeck passes the test, and it turns out the authorities have to admit that this really is a concordance. Therefore, there's nothing heretical going on. You're just taking the words of the Bible and uh, putting them in alphabetical order. So that's not a subject index, and it saves this man's life. He goes on to have a happy career as a musician in Tudor, England. On the other hand, 
Uh, let's jump forwards three or four hundred years to uh, the late Victorian period. And there's a uh, distinguished historian of the Middle Ages called J. Horace Round, and he publishes a book called Feudal England, and Round has a, a bet wire, a previous medieval historian uh, called Freeman. When we come to the index, under the entry for Freeman, the index goes on for uh, three pages, and the entries in the index are full of uh, kind of uh, aggressive uh, scare quotes, his certain history, his facts, his difficulty with the Latin, and so he, uh, uh, in kind of condensed form, absolutely demolishes his rival in the index. And there's something kind of obsessive, there's something even quite um, funny. You can imagine uh, Round um, delivering this index, floated, dripping with sarcasm, spite, loathing um, for this colleague. It's the opposite of the Marbeck index. This is the subject index. This is the index that, that's sort of transmitted via the, the psyche of the indexer. There's nothing neutral or objective about this. So those, I think, are quite good examples of, of the two different indexes that are invented. The, the word for word index invented in, in, in Paris and the subject index invented in Oxford. One has personality, the other has neutrality. So when we think about uh, what relevance does this have in, in, in our sort of uh, digital life, we all do it um, when we use the hashtag. The hashtag is essentially finding an index term for the tweet or the photograph or, or, or the video that we want to post. Ideally, so that other people are able to find it, so that it sits under that bucket of the, of the hashtag. We're indexing it, we're giving it a head word. The, the hashtag is the sort of digital um, indexing head word and it's become democratized, democratized because we all do our own sort of hashtagging for the tweets that we make. The trouble is, um, because it's democratized, we can get things wrong. Uh, so an example of, of, of how this goes wrong would be Susan Boyle's fourth album. When Susan Boyle's album was about to come out, the marketing team decided to promote it with a hashtag, Susan Album Party. Now the trouble with hashtags is they elide the spaces. We don't, we don't uh, include spaces in hashtags. So Susan Album Party can also look like Sue's Anal Bum Party. Twitter jumped on this, so poor old Susan Boyle's album uh, um, album launch was was kind of uh, split into into people who uh, read it as Susan album party and, and the uh, the wider Twitterati who thought this was hilarious and made fun of poor old Sue's uh, anal bum party. So we have to be very careful when we're choosing our uh, head words, either in indexing or in hashtagging. So I hope um, that answers the question of why we should be interested in indexes. They have a currency now that we do our online searching. We should be thinking about how they work. Um, we should be thinking as well that these things don't emerge out of nowhere. They have a history. And also we should be thinking about uh, how we do it, how they can be done well or things can go wrong. They can be abused or uh, they, can, uh, they can go disastrously wrong like the uh, Susan Album Party. Thanks for watching. You can buy my book uh, Index, a history of the, by clicking the link below in the description. And don't forget to subscribe to the Penguin YouTube channel um, for more videos like this.